Tuesdays with Scotty are not the opinions of Scotty White, but the opinions of the lizard people who secretly rule this planet. Thank you. You're listening to the Mobcast Network. Wonderful town, wonderful people, places to go, things to see. My lab is Mobile. That's my wonderful town. Beautiful homes, schools and churches, entertainment, places to shop. My heart's in Mobile. That's my wonderful town. Mobcast Network presents... Live from Stupid Mop Studios, located in Mobile, Alabama. It's Tuesdays with Scotty. This is the podcast about whatever the hell Scotty wants to talk about. From pop culture to food, movies, comics, or games. Literally whatever the hell Scotty wants to talk about. If you don't like it, get your own podcast. Now here's your host, your Native American pop culture spirit guide, Scotty. It's Tuesday! I'm Scotty. This is Tuesday with Scotty. Uh, we got Caleb too here, but we have camera malfunction, so you won't be able to see Caleb, but you can hear him. What's up, producer Caleb? Hey, how's it going? It is going good for the most part. I can't complain. You can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Tuesdays with Scotty. You can subscribe to us to uh, wherever you subscribe, wherever you find podcasts. We're there. We are there for you. You can also get us on YouTube at youtube.com. That's Mopcast Network, and then I dropped my notes. So I have to go find, fishing for my notes for what I for what I want to talk about, which is whatever the hell I want to talk about, right? <laughs> That's right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a couple things that happened. Uh, I want to talk about I want to talk about two things first. Up up of the show. Um, so Elon Musk bought Twitter. Yep. Are you, are you a Twitter user? Not really. Um, this yeah, right. like I only go in enough to like like certain tweets from friends, but that's about it. I got you. I got you. you should come like all of my tweets. <laughs> well, uh, I love Twitter. Yeah, I, Twitter's like my social media. Like, like as as truthful and honest as this podcast is, that's how my Twitter feed is. If you want to know who I am, watch this show. Or read my Twitter. That's who I am. Um, and so I've watched people who uh, are like, we're leaving Twitter because Elon got it. And I'm like, why? And they're like, because he's a bad person. I'm like, do you understand how the internet works? It's all run by bad people. So <laughs> wherever you run to... <laughs> You're going to go to another, they're like, we're going to Tumblr. I'm like, Tumblr's probably run by a pedophile who eats babies. <laughs> I don't know that for a fact. Yeah. You could be a lovely person. I'm just saying, in general, I don't know. I don't get it. What do you think? Uh, I my, my issues are more with what he kind of envisions Twitter as and less of him as an individual thing actually well f- from what he's claimed anyways I should say from what he's publicly what he claimed what is he well he's publicly stated thing like that he, he's treating it more like um he he views it that it's uh the them removing people like misinformation and stuff they're kind of, he's upset about that I'm upset about it but if it's misinformation and Every, it doesn't matter Look, but it's not public speech because it's no, no, it's not, not, no, no, it is public speech. It's not protected speech. It's not protected. Pub- you know what I mean, though? Right. But, it's not protected speech, okay, which, but, which is the argument he's making. Yeah. But here's the thing, right? Look, people. A you, private company can get rid of whoever they want, though. Right. Sure. I'm asking, but see, but now he buys it. He can do what he wants with it. He can kick me off for it. You know, yeah. Out, and I would be sad. Elon, don't kick me off. <laughs> I like Twitter. But. My point is, is that do we need someone to protect us from misinformation? And if we do, what does that uh, say about our society? I mean, looking over the past few years, I might argue yes. Well, looking about history, definitely yes. But I, I, you know, I'm just like, after a while, we're either going to have nannies or we're not. Yeah. 
and I'm kind of like, let's just try it without nannies for a little bit. Let's just see. <laughs> you know? I mean, that's what Facebook is, though, right? Facebook is bad. Like, Facebook will... There's no nannies there. But no, yeah, but the thing about Facebook, though, is like, and ha- this ha- hasn't happened to me, but I know people who've had, like, got suspended or the accounts restricted for, t- you know, things they posted years ago. Yeah, but usually they come back, like, within a week. But st- but still, that's not right either way. No, but it's definitely different than, say, it's, it's removing weird. them from the platform entirely. It's weird that you can get busted for a crime when it wasn't a crime. Yeah. I The other thing that is a terrible idea from Elon for Twitter is the editing feature he wants to add. I want the editing feature. I want to be able to edit. It's great. It is, so the problem becomes, though, when does it become editing and when does it come become gaslighting and re- changing your history of your tweets? That's between someone and someone else. That has nothing to do with me. I mean, at the moment, yeah. It, I mean, yeah, it has nothing to do with you at the moment, but. I mean, I get what you're saying, but again, that's two people who've taken Twitter way too seriously. And no, no, yeah. And if and if if your life is so wrapped up into into that that you need to, you know, people screenshot stuff all the time. Yeah. I don't know. I I mean, I get both sides of the argument, but it's like for me personally, I'm just weary of it. It's like I grew up in a time where, like, I don't mind the idea of being able to fix my grammar, but at the same time. Should I be able to change my tweet entirely? Why? Why? Why wouldn't you? Why are you? Why are you married to it? Also, I mean, why are you married to it? That really, honestly, I mean, I'm also not on there. So. No, but the, the, just in general, it's it's like, uh, well, you tweeted it's in stone. We don't want you to fix that. That's in stone, and that's going to damn you for the rest of your life. People have different thoughts, and people have thoughts that evolve yeah. too. So. Also, yeah. people don't respect where people come from culture wise. So it's just, it's a mess. And I get it. And it's not perfect, but I kind of like it because it's imperfect. I'm also like, my Twitter feed's not full of like, and, and my Facebook feed are both not under like. No, I mean, I, my, I know, I know you and I have nothing to worry about when it comes to that type of stuff. But right. like, it's kind of weird to think out for the people that do have to, the people that are going to use it for those purposes well, but people are going to use anything for evil yeah so i don't know but i don't mind elon he's a weird dude i mean he hasn't ate a baby yet um since no, he the- instead he's made babies behind johnny depp's back <laughs> <laughs> well there's that <laughs> um i want to talk about covid too real quick yeah um i understand that the pandemic is a thing and the country's been uh, apparently today that they're saying the country's out of a pandemic. I'm not pandemic. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I how I think we're in a good spot compared I, to a few. I think I think I think there's light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, that's what I think. We're not we're not there yet, but we're getting cl- a lot closer than we unless think. you listen to certain podcasters, i.e., most of them that live in California. I swear to God, speaking of their speaking of Twitter, I've seen podcasts. I podcasters that i enjoy and listen to and i follow on twitter are freaking the hell out about um covid like it's still in 2020 mm-hmm. and i don't think i don't think we're we're not in 2020 anymore right no i mean yes it's but people lost their their mind when uh the airlines could you know go maskless and i saw people like well i guess i'll never leave the state of california again i'm like <laughs> really really is it or am i miss miss or i'm not understanding that you know we're in alabama here and it's we haven't had a mass mandate in, in, in months and yeah. our covid rates are not high and um i don't you know i, I don't i don't quite get it i don't kind of the i only see the panic from california i don't see it from anywhere else i mean have you noticed it uh not really i mean it's it's just weird yeah, I, I'm not sure what to make of it, honestly. I mean, and I'm, not, I'm not saying, hey, look, if you're more comfortable in a mask, I, I know people are like, are like, I'm never not wearing a mask again. I'm like, okay. Personally, I, I'd rather it be more similar to, say, Japan, where I, or one of those countries where when I'm sick, I'll put on a mask right. just, because, just because I actually care about other people. Right, and, right. Absolutely. And especially I, if I got to go out and I happen to be sick. Right, absolutely. But, but of course, we're also. 
that that's a problem apparently even here like you did if you're doing that then but, that's... but I, I don't know about you but for me wearing a mask in a place and not wearing a mask i've not been shamed one way or the other no um the closest i think well also we live in a state where they don't care you know what and the closest thing is like in 2020 um i was at the eye doctor mm-hmm and I wore my mask in the eye doctor, and someone was also wearing a mask, but they looked at me and called me a sheeple. And I was like, well, you're also wearing the mask, so yeah. aren't you a sheeple? But I just caught them up to, like, maybe they're in mental illness, or maybe they were listening too much, you know, Fox News. But yeah, I don't know. I just... I, I understand that there is a thing, and I understand that the, 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 the COVID is real. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not saying it's not. I'm just like... I think it's actually getting better. So, and I know there's other variants, but like more people getting vaccinated and it's burning through people who have already, who have not been vaccinated. So not, not killing them, but I'm saying like it runs a life. A virus will end up running against a wall. Yeah. Uh, well, also as very, I mean, the trick to a virus is eventually the variations are meant to not immediately kill you. It's meant to slowly kill you, but there you're not supposed to immediately die. Like how it was when we first, right. It, it, we're getting better. So it's, Hey, California, lighten up a little bit, guys. It's going to be okay. We love you. <laughs> it's going to be fine. We'll get through this. Um, I Happier news. I was at the Huntsville Pop Expo this past weekend. Okay, yep. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right, yeah. Because you, yeah, you've been taking pictures and having... Yeah, yeah, we, we had a really good show. We yeah. had uh, so Yeah, we were, talk- we were talking about how, that, how well it went. Yeah, we uh, uh, sold a lot of toys, and that was good. I uh, met Leah Thompson, which was good. Yeah. I met the cast of Ruby, so Team Ruby. I met them, and they were lovely. And uh, 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 a team, actual Team Ruby, or yeah, actual Team okay. Ruby. So okay, yeah. Um, Ruby, Yang, Blake, and, and Weiss. Um, Weiss. Yep, they're voice actors. Yeah, so Lindsay, um, yeah, Aaron. Be- yeah, you're better than I am at this. <laughs> Lindsay, Aaron, Kara, and. Those are the three I know. Yeah, but I got I got oh and oh and I got Barbara. To, How could I forget Barbara? Barbara. Yeah, and I got uh, I got autograph cards and it was very sweet. Yeah, and so that was very cool. And then uh, met some other people and Huntsville's such a really good show though. Like I yeah, I've noticed that they tend to get pretty decent guests. You got, you're going to go with me next year. It's it's a it's a blast. It's going to be April. Yeah, we talked about this year, but it just in. I, I don't think we kept talking about it. <laughs> well, the thing is, is like, I'd love to take, I, I'm going to have to make a decision about my toy shop. Yeah. In the next, not this year. I'm good. I love my toy shop. I love having a toy shop. I love doing the, the, um, shows, but at the moment with what I only have, a, I have a small SUV mm-hmm. and I pack it full of whatever I can pack. And then I go to show to show. Yep. And it's by myself. The reason why I do it by myself is because I literally have no room for anybody yeah, else. Yeah. And that makes sense. I'm going to have to make a decision if I want to continue doing this is, is do I really want to spend more money into the show, into, in, into the business and grow it? Or do you want to cut my losses, sell the shop and do other things? Cause there's other things I'm interested in podcasting, comic book making and, that that I love so that I can still do shows, but because I really like doing conventions mm-hmm. and the toy store is just an aspect of that. But um I mean I don't have to like decide if I want to get a van for this and you know there's and that's a cost. Yep. That I, and I'm not sure if I want to do it or not yet, but we'll we'll cross that bridge sometime next year. I don't know yet. But Jeremy runs a good show at Huntsville. So definitely check it out next year. It's a good show. And it's a very, very good show. But speaking of good shows, I have a good one today. We have uh, Tommy Wedgen. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's our interview. Uh, we talk. Uh, he's the owner of Gamers and Geeks and owner owner of um, Diamond Championship Wrestling. So he owns a game store and a wrestling company. And we talk about both of those things and how he's such a great entrepreneur. And so I'm excited for that. He, he's a good interview. It's a good show. Yeah, a lot of fun. And then uh, uh, there's a great uh, story about a fire. Uh, in in between those, so you'll get to hear that for our uh, "What If I Told You" segment, and then so we'll just get to Tommy. Tommy, we'll go say, take it away there. Ooh, ooh, at 
Well, hello. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Thank you for stopping by and chatting for us for a little while. Um, I owe a lot to you, and I'm gonna just get this mushy stuff out of the way straight up. I, um, your generosity allowing us to, you know, have our studio and be part of your community where you didn't have to is amazing. And uh, I'm so thrilled that that we we can have you on here to, to talk. And and but seriously, you're a big part of this. I'm the one calling you at like ten o'clock, <laughs> asking you editing questions. Oh, I think it's coming more, over to I, my house. From I think that's more than fair, but you know, we were, you know, this started in college in, in a college studio, and then I moved here, and then we were just homeless, and we had managed to use your RPG rooms for for the game store to start recording. I remember, and I don't know if you remember, when you first got the the new building here at Gamers and Geeks um you know there's a lot of junk and stuff back here and then you finally had gotten it all cleaned out and you were so happy and you grabbed me it's like Scotty, come see this come see this and so <laughs> right. you and i walked in the back and we're looking at this stuff and and you know it's it's this is almost three years ago and it's, it's crazy how time flies because oh, yeah. of because of COVID. covid but um i remember like there's no arcade there's there's no half of these don't have walls it's you know mm -hmm. it's just it's crazy and i'm like can I can I build a studio? I, I need a I need a spot. Yep. Can can you help me? And it's like, oh yeah, sure, let's do this. And so, and then we figured out the right spot. I think this turned out great for yeah. us. I think I, this. I just love like stuff like that where it's like you know, two communities can come together and kind of you know form this awesome thing. Uh, we have a uh, uh, a guy that wrestles for us, and his his side gig is disc golf, and he has a, a thing called uh, Dudley's disc diving. Or Dud's disc dive. Yeah, I see. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so he goes around and like dives in all the water and gets all these discs out. So he'll give them back to people for free. Right. Like, like he, he doesn't even charge them. Right. right. You know, and then, but sometimes he ends up with extra ones. Plus he like buys lots and stuff online and whatnot. Uh, so we're going to put a little sample of that up here because, you know, he he can't always have a place to absolutely go get it. So right. we're going to, you know, put it up here, try it for a month. Right. Just give him a little display. But he made a post online and it got like, a hundred like interactions and comments and like likes and stuff I and mean, it was huge have you ever played disc golf uh oh it's been a while but it's yeah. been a while for yeah. me too but I, I keep threatening to get back in it so it's like you know, there's one right around the corner like if you pull out take a left like you could walk there it's like, really right before you get to the church you yep. learn something every every day i learned everything but so um tommy let's i find you fascinating um for lots of reasons you're a young guy and you're interestingly successful at, at at this stuff. You 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 own a game store, and first of all, you got through COVID. I mean, we're still getting through COVID, but you got through the, the tough ends of COVID, and you kept your doors open, which a lot of game stores didn't. Um, you bef before that, that which was crazy, and you I'll let you get into it more, is because you had you had a smaller store, you had just moved it to this larger store, which is where we're at now it used to be an old grocery store it's an old and uh, for for those local it used to be a win dixie if you know <laughs> <laughs> and so and then the, you know things are starting to happen and then COVID. i mean just out of nowhere it shuts everything down and um hey i know it had to been scary for you everybody but it's scary for you imagine because it's not only it's not only your dream that you've got going there but you've got employees oh, yeah. and, and 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 you're trying to like the hell it was it was the 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 worst timing. Um, so when I moved the store, I overextended, right? Like uh, you know, I had to spend a lot to to get into this place, and we wanted to expand a lot of things and stuff like that. And that just eats a lot of capital. And we didn't necessarily have like a financial back or anything. We were just doing this on our own dime. So. Um, we spent 2019 and, and I had this plan. I was like, you know, once we get here, I'm going to do this tournament and I'm going to give away a Mustang. Right. 
And and I was like, that's gonna let everyone know that we're here, what's going on, and everything. And uh, around that time, uh, we got hit with a, a change of uh, occupancy. I think is what it was called. So initially, this building was rated at um, a retail environment, but we apparently converted it to an assembly because so many people could could fit in here or whatnot. Uh, and in the process of doing so, they made you change all kinds of things with the building. Like you had to change. I mean, we're talking tens of thousands of dollars. You know what I mean? Hundreds. You know Crazy. I mean? Yeah. So, um, so around this time of this tournament, I get hit with that. And like, they're like, we're going to shut you down. Oh man, like so, like my anxiety. I'm like, oh man, you know, I, I did, I did too much. You know, I overextended. You know, and stuff like that. So, you know, we we put our head down. We pushed through that. Uh, I got a friend who's an engineer, Scott Peach. Check him out if you ever need any engineering okay. stuff done. Go shout out Scott Peach. Yeah, yeah. He was he he was able to sit down and you know we figured out things like if we put like you know certain like stabilized like displays in certain areas. That, that would lower it down you know what i mean so right. like we did things to what we could to to lower it to a, a certain amount um and uh so we got that all fixed and you know that was like a hump and we, we finally started getting through it uh and then you know we had like a few good months and then COVID hit right <laughs> and so um you know the i i i, I always do things differently you mm -hmm. know like not not typical so my biggest concern was you know first off we have a great community so you know people were still contacting us they were buying stuff from us via messenger and email and you know any way they could support plus they're bored at home so playing games is fun right yeah yeah you did uh um car car, car, car service yeah. and stuff yeah yeah so uh so we did that and um and then we got like a little bit of government help uh and stuff like that so 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 during this time uh it just it was just a very rough time but my biggest concern was making sure that we kept everybody on board so uh our assistant manager right now billy at the time was doing <laughs> medical work so i said hey you know anyone that that needs the hours come to me anyone that doesn't need the hours come to me so uh billy was like medical work is asking for my time way more right now um i'm going to go there more so so we we, we lost we didn't lose him but no but his hours went to zero <laughs> right, right 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 it's, it's um, shifted yeah but then other people were like i need hours so i was like you know here's what we're gonna do we're gonna give you you know two-thirds of the amount of hours you had bear in mind our doors were closed right absolutely, know? yeah so we're going to give you two-thirds of the amount of hours that you had you know um if you need more come to us and stuff like that you know so so you know my biggest concern was was looking out for the people who you know because what are they going to do at that point in time right. right and uh you know so i'm like you know working on offsetting extra assets and stuff like that you know uh, this was before we got any government help because it took a while for that to come in you know we're filling out paperwork for that never done that before <laughs> and uh so you know we're trying to get all this stuff figured out and it ended up being one of the best things which is you know obviously it wasn't a good situation but uh everybody just let their people go during that time mm -hmm. so whenever it got turned back on they didn't have people you know so my biggest concern was like look out for my people you know what i mean so whenever we turn back on we pretty much had everybody you know what i mean like, right, we were right. good to go we were ready to rock and roll so i think that that was uh you know good you know so, something in our favor for whenever it did turn back on you know stuff like that and we went through several on and offs because you know we came back and then uh like apparently somebody came in the store that had it and there wasn't a whole bunch known about it at the time so we had to shut down and clean it down and wait the period of time and uh and then like during that same year we got hit with two hurricanes it's true we, we did sure we, did we lost uh like a week of power give or take a couple of days on each one the first time it happened we lost a whole bunch of snacks and candy because it was hot I in here and it all melted you know so that was just a it was an, an interesting year, to, to say the least. Uh, and then, but 
you know, that was supposed to be the year that we were supposed to like break a whole bunch of sales goals and stuff. Cause you know, that's what we had been gearing up mm -hmm. towards. And then, but last year we, we crushed it. You know what I mean? So we, we were able to surpass that and then some. So, so, so I'm going to try to describe your short for the, for people. Everyone should come. If you're, you're coming to mobile, you definitely, and you like game stuff. Definitely come to check gamers and games. It's great. But again, it's this giant store. It's this mega mecca for just all things fun and nerdy and nerd disneyland it's, it's very much like a nerd disneyland so you know you've got a you've got a retail spot up front but it's, that takes care of your your card games or your magic or your good pokemon and other stuff you've got aisles and aisles of for warhammer and other miniature games you've got comics you've got uh, this uh, you've got pops but you've got this uncanny like collection of tabletop rpg books and then you've got pops on the other side you know and, and this crazy stuff and then you've got this amazing floor space to play and you don't charge people to play you don't because it, for you it's community because community will make you money that's the smart part about it like some somebody like oh i need the dollar or five dollars to play the table no no I, i'm going to buy the snacks and drinks and, and 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 all my supplements and everything from you now because i you're you're laying down that community um, of course, you've got my toy store there too, so I'm I'm, I'm there and there. And the other side, you've got private RPG tabletop rooms, which are great. And then in the back, you have an arcade, and then you know comes into the the studio and all this other stuff. It is, it is crazy. And then next door, you've got Engage Gaming, which has you know console gaming. I mean, it's like, it's insane. I've never I've I travel a lot to do a lot of shows and stuff. I've still not seen a place like this, which is cool. Yeah, and uh, and and it is very unique. And so. I want to take a step back from that and get to know how this started for you um, and a little bit about your background. So, you, you know, of course, you're local. You're like me. We're both here from Alabama, South Alabama, which there is not a lot of opportunity lying around. You have to make your own. Yeah. yeah. And especially I think you and I are kind of similar in our backgrounds where we were we weren't rich. And so we did what we could, right? Yeah, and then, and we've managed to turn things into other stuff. So I, so let's just start start there. So, when did you decided to to do this? You were working for, you you had purchased gamers and geeks from someone else, right? If I'm right, correct. And so you were working for them. Yeah, I'd worked for them for about a year, uh, and I think they were just kind of getting tired of uh, of you know running it because it's. Oftentimes it's a lot of work for very little return, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and I think they were just kind of getting tired of it and they had their hands doing other things and stuff. And it was probably like the least fruitful thing that they were doing. And uh, I said, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm interested in buying it. And you know what I mean? Right. So uh went to a bunch of banks. The bank said, no, uh, just they, they they said, fine, we'll finance it for you. Just come up with this deposit. Bank said no. So uh, I ended up saying, uh, let me see if I can borrow the money from my aunt. So I asked my aunt, I said, hey, can I borrow, you know, like $20,000? And she was like, what for? And I was like, oh, I want to buy this store. You know, it's deposit, blah, blah, but I'll pay you back in a month. And she was like, what kind of shady stuff are you doing, right? <laughs> are you are you doing drugs, Tommy? Or just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. And 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 I was like, no, 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 no. I can make this work. You know, they I built up this really big inventory. I can sell off some of these cards, you know, and so on and so forth. And she was like, I don't know. I talked to your uncle, you know. Uh, so the previous owner came back to me at the time, and he was like, you know, so what's going on? You know, I've been waiting, and and I was like, I'm I'm waiting to hear back from my aunt. You know, all the banks said no. Uh, so just in case you don't know, if you ever want to open a game store, the banks will likely said no. Game stores are uh, like a high risk rating as far as that goes for them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Know, loaning money or whatnot. And, you know, I've bought 14 to 16 over the past almost seven years. So you know why? <laughs> yeah, so every time I buy one, I'm just saying the bank's right. Right, you know right. I mean? mm -hmm. uh, but I'm the anomaly, I guess. So, uh, so anyway. So he said, how are you going to pay her back in a month? So I told him, you know, what my plan was. Said, how are you going to pay her back in a month? I said, I'm going to sell all these cards. He's like, there's not $20,000 worth of cards here. I said, yeah, there is. Like, I've been working here. I've accumulated all these things. I know what's here. And he was like, you can't get $20,000 worth of cards of that, much less in a month. And I said, bet. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
So he said, I'll tell you what. He said, if you if, if you do that, you know, you got 30 days. If, if you do that, I'll sign it over to you. So at that point in time, I didn't even have to like borrow it to get the resources to do it. He just let me use his resources, which was amazing. The best deal right. ever would not be in the position if it weren't for him offering me that. Super grateful. He's still a great friend of mine. Awesome person for giving me that opportunity. Three weeks later, I, I called him with a check with $21,000. <laughs> so I started, I was off to the races with $1,000 in the bank and like rent and power were due two weeks later. And I didn't know how I was going to do it. But uh, in the deal, he was able to, you know, he, he thought he used foresight and he said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and finance this coming pre-release in into the deal for you so he went ahead and paid for that pre-release as well so that was able to give us the the leap that we needed to so like i said if it wasn't for the the deal that he gave you know what i mean like mm -hmm. would definitely not and then after that it was just grinding man so do you remember the moment where like bef before he's selling or he's mentioned that he wants to sell that like i don't know spitballing you're, you're lying in bed and you're like yes i can do this okay so so before he sold it to me, it was like, I said to myself, I either want to own my own game store, make my own con, like local convention mm -hmm. type thing, or I'm going to go get a job at the power company, the phone company, work for 20 years and retire. Like I'm, I'm at the point in my age in my life to where I need to shit or get off the pot right you can beat that out or not no no yeah. no we're uh, no no so, no no we also say fuck occasionally oh, sure. <laughs> uh, so you know i was like i need to uh, i need to do something you know so i was like i'm gonna do one of these two things i'm just gonna go get a job where i work 20 years and retire which is not me like i i would die if i had like a factory job where i had to put like a a thing in right the, you know every some day, people you built know. for it you're not yeah not not built for that but you know i was like you know at this point in time i have, I have a son you know and i need to start thinking about right it's, it's, it's not just you yeah i'm i'm not going to make progress this way so you know and i just and i just i just hustled and like it wasn't just me i mean like you know from from people that have came in to 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 help you know come and gone you know like uh there's just been a ton of people throughout, like uh, Anna Zhao, Jess mm -hmm. Austin. Uh, I mean, just a ton of people that have come. And, you know, well, we'll, we'll just toot our own horn. We have JD, who's on our shows. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and, you know, JD, we wouldn't, miniatures would not be where it is right now for one JD. Mm -hmm. He is uh, not only a great salesperson, but he's he loves the community just as much, if not more than I do. He's, he's invested in it. He wants to see it grow. You know, everybody wants their their local game store to be their home and their place for blah mm -hmm. right and like we're accepting of that so whatever your blah is we'll do our best to accommodate you you know so you, i can't go out and buy 10 million dollars worth of you know x y or z just because mm -hmm. this is what you like right but if there's a community for it and there's interest we'll buy some and mm -hmm. it works and we'll continue to do it until it's it's huge and jd's got i mean the report from last month uh warhammer is usually number uh two or number three in sales in the store so i mean it is mm -hmm. it is huge you know so it was never like that before yeah i got a lot of hate a lot of hate because whenever i first sold the store or when i first bought the store rather i sold the cards well we had some 40k product that was on the shelf that was old it just wasn't moving there right. might have been a couple of desirable items but yeah. most of it was right, right, stagnant right. inventory and and I, I i i made that as part of the deal to to finalize the deal you know and oh my god they're like oh this guy's not gonna do miniatures this guy's not gonna do car you know like he only wants to do cards and stuff and i'm like you know no i just need to you know i just had to get in the door right absolutely. you know what i mean yeah. like like <laughs> you know so absolutely it, it, it's not whether i play it or not you know i don't i don't really watch anime you know there's there's a lot of things that i don't like nerdisms that I don't really super belong into a whole bunch. I watch Star Wars, but not a lot of Star Trek, right? So, right. Like, you know, but but everyone has their their nerd. Absolutely, right? you know, absolutely. So, uh, you know, everyone's like, "Oh, did you see this thing?" And I'm like, "No," <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I'm accepting of that. You know, right. if that's your if that's your fandom or that's what you do, then 
by all means, we're going to support you and we're going to support it. You know what I mean? So that's why it's great to have so many different people. You know, Josh is the general manager of the store and also, you know, it's a great guy. Our, our, our local weeb lord, you know, I mean, he, he loves that stuff, you know, so like <laughs> you don't want me ordering anime product like I've seen a handful of right, same here. I'm not... stuff I know you want him because he's super into the new trend, right, he knows what's stuff, yeah. you know, and Billy's the same way. Say... Billy's got our 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 statues, statues going, right. going insane, you know, so like it's good to have people like JD and stuff and everyone has their own little the little niche. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 their own little ingredients that they bring to the big geek pie that we sell. What's your favorite thing about owning a game store? I went to Lowe's last week. Mm -hmm. Grab some some uh, broomsticks for wrestling. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that. That because yeah, uh, yeah. uh, that's your other passion. I really want to get into that too. But yeah, uh, we have some broomsticks build this foundation, and uh, which is a thing you do. <laughs> yeah, because you know sometimes you need broomsticks. Something right? you need broomsticks for. And uh, this girl walks up and says, "Is that a gamers and geeks tattoo?" So I have a G and G tattoo on my leg, and right. uh, it, it's just the G and G logo, but it's just distressed. They're like cracked and stuff because that's me. I'm kind of high strung sometimes, you know, barely holding on. <laughs> oh, I remember a time you would never do this. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, you actually got me out of my shell on that. I, I did one before you. Yeah. I was, I was very nervous. You yeah. can hear to my voice too, but uh, when you realize you're just talking, it's nothing to yeah, it. Just, and I'm just talking to you. So <laughs> right. Fine, right. Um, well, Caleb, he's listening. Yeah, yeah I'm here. <laughs> no, don't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it! Now it's all messed up. I got to. I don't know what I'm doing. What, 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 what I'm doing? My hands. hands. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but the, the <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big SNL fan. Star. Superstar, superstar, yeah. yeah. Um, big SNL um, fan. But uh, she, 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 she was like, "Is that a gamers and geeks tattoo?" And I was like, "Yeah." And she was like. Do you work there? And I was like, yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, oh my God, I love that store. You know, and it's like, that's my favorite part. Like yeah. to, to be able to to create something that people call their home and want to come to and spend time with and stuff. You know, whether we share fandoms or not, you know, it's just like we're very uh accepting. Of, of everyone you know and a lot of stores you know maybe they're geared towards one particular game or another particular game and sometimes you can't cross those streams right right like like you know there's almost like a, a war between and here it's it, it, it's not like that at all no like, you know like you know and uh i worked at a, at a at another store and when a customer would come in and they would sell you their magic collection you know, like like as a business, that's how you make money. You buy the collection, yep. you turn around, sell the cards. So there's a margin in the cards. Um, but you were losing a customer. Here, when someone sells you something, nine times out of ten, it's just to get into another game. Right. You're getting out of magic and getting into right. you know, RPGs or out of RPGs, you know. Uh, Hup works for us and he's a shift leader. He's been here for a while and uh, when we started, he was one of the main people that spearheaded Magic the Gathering. And JD has turned him to what he calls the dark side. That's not me. That's that's just JD. <laughs> and and he is all about Warhammer. Yeah, he just um, last week he painted something, and he was so happy to show me. It was, it was, and he did a really great job. Yeah. And so, but like I'm an old, like I did Warhammer for a time, and then um, I got out of it. So I'm like I'm not. I, like he was showing me his thing, and I was just like. Mm, it's like when my nephew starts talking Pokemon, I'm like, that's wonderful. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm looking at, but right. that's wonderful. If you roll 66. Hell yeah. It's awesome. You just nod. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, and uh, I'm the same way. So like a lot of times, and I, I know, but like I'm not into like the current meta. Right, or, right. You know, I, and again, I played oh, you're Pokemon. I played Magic. I played almost multiple RPG games, you know, but... I'm just not a hundred percent with all the things I run the business. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, I'm I'm busy. <laughs> yeah, so. and I miss it, but I don't. Well, but I, I mean, John, I, have you played John's game yet? Yes, I played John's Is game. Is that not the it's most great. fun it's, game it's ever? Fa it's, fa it's fantastic. Um, I, like I that game. What's it? Uh, tra uh, traders, and traders and traders. Trader, what is it? Traders and traders. So it's G R T R A D R and T R A I T. Yes, yes. I, I love that. Yeah. Game. So John's coming on the show probably after you. I think he's okay. next, and I think he's going to be next. 
and because he's about to launch the Kickstarter, and we yes. want to make sure he has the Kickstarter ready to go. And stuff. Yeah, we're going to promote. Yeah. So our friend John Lobata has a uh, he created a, a wonderful, really fun card game yeah. that I want everyone to play and back when the Kickstarter comes because I've I've done it. I played a few times and I really really like yeah, it. It's a lot of fun. And then you know, you and me both have played. I mean, I've played games most of my life. And I played a lot of time because, you know, yeah. my background, you know this, but um, I managed a game store in the, mm-hmm. the, the early aughts, you know, yep. Ground Zero. We're really in, close to where we are right, right down the road yeah. from, our, from Ground Zero. And so part of being part of Ground Zero, well, managing that was I had to learn everything so I could teach people. So mm-hmm. I played everything up to a certain point. And so, you know, there were just one or two things that he was kind of missing that are kind of general. Like, uh, I think my biggest contribution is... Uh, discard at the end of the turn because you, that's you need a refresher yes and you need a discard and yep. so you know so that's my contribution to it so so proud so i didn't i didn't really have much of, i i think the only thing i asked was uh the, the there's a card called the baron and it's, yeah. it's kind of like a counter spell for those people who play magic or right. whatever uh you you it's a trap <laughs> it's um, a trap yeah <laughs> um but uh i i had one in my hand and someone was doing something to somebody else and they flipped the coin. It was like the gamble thing. Or yeah. whatever. And they flipped the coin and it happened. And I looked at John and said, at what point in time in the game can this happen? Right. And he was like, anytime you want it to. And I said, okay, I want it to happen now because the person won the coin toss. Right. So, you know, why use the card if they lost well, the coin, coin toss? toss right? yeah, you know, so, so I had to wait until the person won the coin toss. <laughs> and I was like, now and, and the, the person was just like, Man, that's not fair. <laughs> like, no, it sorry. works. It works. <laughs> Caleb, you're, you're Caleb's a little younger than us, and um, he's all he 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 doesn't have a camera right now. So, but he he has a voice. And yeah. Can, uh, you did um did you play card games? I know you play Magic now, some right? Yeah, I, I I've got so I used to play Magic for a while. Got back into it again with the D and D sets. Yeah. Oh, um, man, that D and D sets are so good. Yeah. Yeah, they're so good. Uh, nice. Which I'm excited Smart. for. Legends of Boulder's Gate coming. And, There's uh, a pre-release for that coming up, right? Yeah, yeah, and th- they're coming out with a 40k set. Yeah, so smart. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you, you've got all but these properties. You make in the use same of them. Building. I mean, right, right, exactly. I Trust mean, me. Like, I, there's 40k players that are going to play it. Oh, and I, I carry 40k toys gonna, for the same reason. It's yeah. smart. It's yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I, and then I like the DC deck building. I like the what, what did you deck building is fun. So yeah. what did you what did you what did you start with as a as a kid? What did you start playing? When did you start playing? Actually, uh, did you play as a kid or did you play as an adult? I, mean, I played as an adult. Also, no card games there. Not well. No Pokemon. No, 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 no like nerd card oh, games. I, I have funny stories about Pokemon. Like I never oh, played. Please, yeah, yeah. Like I didn't grow up playing Pokemon or Yu Gi Oh or any of that. Or but okay, always, so that's cool. I, I grew up in a very rough childhood. Uh, we often moved. We didn't have power or water. I would have to turn it on illegally per orders of my dad. So we would be able to take a warm bath at night right. um, and stuff. So um, a friend of mine gave me a, a shoebox of his duplicate Pokemon cards. And I didn't play the game. At the time, I was probably 16 or 17. I didn't really have an interest to play the game. Uh, and I had a game console that was broken, so we couldn't sell it, but it still worked. It was like a, a I think it was like a PS, PS1, and the lid wasn't on it. Right. Mm-hmm. But you could put the disc in, and if you put the disc in to try to play it, it wouldn't work. But if you put, like, something dark over oh, right. Facebook yep. yeah. or something, yeah. it would, it, you know, it, it would have, actually be able to read the disc, right. you know? Mm-hmm. So, uh, so I had that. So luckily, I was able to keep this <laughs> this thing because it didn't work. You know, according to the pawn shops or whatever, because my my dad would make me sell all of my stuff and contribute it to the house. So, <sighs> um, so I had this. So, so I had all these Pokemon cards and all these kids in this apartment complex that we stayed at. They, I mean, it was, it was crack for them. I mean, they call it cardboard crack, but man, they'd walk up. You got any uh, blast <laughs> I mean, It was it was insane, and I I just saw their their want for this, and I was like. Oh man, so you know, I I kind of started like trading what I had uh, for. I, I just use it as a as a resource, mm-hmm. you know. So I started trading what I had for for other things to get shinier things. So if I knew this kid wanted this thing, then I'd trade these to get this kid to get that. You know what I mean? Right. And then I started trading those things for for games. So I would get, you know, like oh, I want you know star fox or i want this or i want that so i had like a whole little bookshelf of games that i got from this guy's extra my friend's extra pokemon right he just gave me mm-hmm. a shoebox 
<laughs> I had a, you know, we live in an apartment. I was on the bottom floor. So the kids would come up and knock on my window. Hey, can I uh, borrow SmackDown? I'm like, that's a dollar. <laughs> right, right. So I'd rent them back their own game for like a night. You know, so like I'd trade all these cards for for, for these games. And then I would rent the games out, you know. So I was, smart, yeah. you know, smart. Entrepreneur, entrepreneur. Love it. That, that okay. was my first experience with Pokemon. I, I used to like. Uh, I have always liked toys and, and I played with toys longer than I think most kids should, should play with toys, but whatever. And then I changed to like, it was funny. Cause like about the time I was like, I really should stop playing with toys before people laugh at me. Uh, you know, as a kid, I was like, but luckily I could like, Oh, well I can collect. And so I, right. so I bought and collect. So I kept them in the pack. The only difference is I still bought what I wanted. I just didn't yeah. play with it. Kept them in the package. But I remember in middle school, like sixth grade, I had a, I had a friend, Mike Smith, I, uh, yeah. Mike Smith had all the coolest toys. Yeah. Had everything that I ever wanted. I love that. And he was getting out of it. And so I would buy toys during the course of the week with my lunch money. Oh, okay. So I would, so mom was always like, she, like when I come home, she's like, why are you so hungry? And <laughs> not knowing that. <laughs> right. Like, you know, the transformer I got or whatever. Cause my mom, you know, my mom was smart in, you know, we didn't have a lot of money and my dad owned his own business. So we, you know, and, and as you know, with owning your own business, it's sometimes feast or famine. And so, but in the famine times, mom would go to Goodwill and this is before eBay. So people would just get rid of toys. So I'd come home with like two millennium Falcons that mom probably paid $3 for yeah. mm -hmm. or just a line of just star Wars action figures. That was some kids that she probably bought for five bucks for, for the, for the whole lot. She worked midnights at. Um, she started your addiction. Oh, absolutely. Uh, she worked graveyard at the the county jail, and so she would finish finish there, go to Hardee's to have breakfast and coffee, talk to some friends, and then wait for the Goodwill to open up. Okay. Stop by the Goodwill when they got the new stuff, bought what she wanted, and then go home and go to bed. That's that was her yeah. routine, you know. And so that often I would get, and so. That's how I got my crack. I was just like, oh, so I'm the kid who's like, I'm going to need to buy this. I need to. I need. Yeah. Oh, you got a Manny face from He-Man? Oh, I need that. So in my book, I talk about. Uh, yes, that's right. You were an author. Yeah. Uh, I, I talk about. Um, I don't even remember how old I was. I bet I was probably first grade, if I had to guess. And. uh I went out to the schoolyard and my dad had told me that you could eat ants. And he was like, you know, it's a delicacy in some places and, you know, they have chocolate covered ants and so on and so forth. Right. And I was like, can you eat one? He's like, yeah, eat one right now. And we listened to what he said. So I ate one. It didn't taste like anything. Like nothing happened. Right. You know what I mean? Like it was like a something in your tooth. You know right. right. I mean? So kind of uh, crunchy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not even really that, you know, yeah. so, uh, that poor aunt probably had them. What the fuck? <laughs> 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 it's the opposite of honey. I shrunk the kids. kids right. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, I went out to the schoolyard and, you know, somehow that subject popped up and I was like, you can eat ants. And they were like, no, uh, you know, and I was like, bet, you know? Yeah. So man, all these kids like doing their, their lunch money or their ice cream money or whatever. And, you know, I had every kid in the schoolyard like around and I was like, you know, Picked one up and ate it, right? So I got this change. I'm like, this is awesome, right? <laughs> so um, this one kid was like, I bet you won't eat a live one. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> right? And, and it, they were like, it's got to be a fire ant. It's got to be a fire ant. I was like, Ugh, I was kind of scared, right? But <sighs> then they started throwing their money in that pot. And that pot looked pretty good. So, man, I did it. And, uh, you know, they, they asked me all these questions like, is it still alive? Did it hurt? Can you feel it crawling around inside of you? So, of course, I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Showmanship. Yeah, yeah. Showmanship. Yeah. After these messages, we'll be right back. Hey everybody, I am um, going to pause this interview with Tommy and uh, talk to my friend John Alfaro, who you just saw recently on the Cult Movie Canteen, the Xanadu episode. And so much fun. We hope to have you again on uh, sometime this season. We're going to do some more fun stuff. Plus, we're going to do uh, have you on Tuesdays with Scotty as well. But you're going to be on Tuesdays with Scotty on this 
this little segment that we I call, like interrupting things. You are interrupting things. Okay. And you like you like mystery and true crime yes. stuff. Which love is, it. And so that's pretty much all I watch to the point where it disturbs my husband a little <laughs> bit. He's like, please stop watching Snapped. <laughs> I can't have you watching that anymore. So uh trigger warning for everybody out there. This is a heavy story. I will let everyone know this is a heavy story. But um it's it's um it's one I didn't know for a long time and then I found out and got obsessed with it. So I even have a book well up. I'll show you pictures and then I'll post pictures too for everybody to see. But you can see there's some visual aids. Okay. This. Are you ready? I am ready. What if I told you that one of America's most beloved comedians? I had text messages as I read that. <laughs> like, it's texting me right know, now. Right now. It's just texting me right now. And it's like, well, well, that just blocks what I'm trying to read. So, again, what if I told you that one of America's most beloved comedians and theater actors almost didn't survive past the age of 13? That a day at, a, at the circus would change his life and many other people? forever interesting hmm. july 6 1944 44 was an extremely hot day in hartford connecticut the town was excited though as the ringling brothers barnum and barry circus was in town the show had clowns animal acts and trapeze artists ready to catch the imagination of every boy and girl who watched thousands of people came and sat under the big top among the thousands was of circus gozer, goers was a young Charles Nelson Riley, who would later become a Tony Award-winning actor, a stage director, and a panelist on game shows and late-night talk shows in the 70s. Now, if you're not familiar with Charles Nelson Riley, for those who are not, I'm a big fan. I, I like watching Buzzer. Yeah, it's, Buzzer. Mm -hmm. bu Buzzer is, 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 is a game show network that shows pretty much 70s and 80s mm -hmm. game shows. And... and or as my kid says, vintage. Vintage. <laughs> vintage. Vintage game shows. And um, Charles Nelson Riley is one of the more flamboyant characters that's usually on the match game mm -hmm. or Hollywood Squares. Yeah, there's there's a time there's it's either him or Paul Lynn. And yeah. That's, they're, they're interchangeable. But um, So how old was he? He is 13. 13 at the time. 13 okay. at the time of this. Actually, my, li my, li my next line is, he was 13 at the time. <laughs> And his friend had gotten free tickets to the to the circus. He asked his mother if he could go, but she said no, since they were already going to the show later that night with his father. You can't go to the circus twice. Well, he snuck off anyway. And when his mother caught him, she screamed from the porch saying, I hope it burns to the <gasps> ground. Oh, no. The big top tent could seat 9,000 specta uh, spectators around its three rings and uh, measured 200 feet. Okay, first of all, can I stop you for a second? Sure, absolutely. Why would his mother hope it burns to the ground just because he's going twice? Like, sure. I don't, I get you want to put your foot down and say, I'm the mama and I make the rules. Right, right. But you hope it burns to the ground? Right, right. I, you know, You're a monster. She kind of. It's also the Sorry. 40s. It's also the 44, <laughs> I guess. I, yeah. Okay. I think it, I think you can't say step on a Lego. Like, I, I hope you step on a Lego. I think it's one of those things where you're mad in the moment and you yeah, regret it Yeah, I get it, it. But burn to the ground is excessive. Okay. Continue. So the Big Top could seat 9,000 spectators around its three rings and measure 200 feet wide by 400 feet long with 15 high sidewalls and a roof that was nearly 50 foot high. So we're, it's a yeah. huge, huge spot. Inside the tent uh, had been erected over freshly mowed grass and exposed dirt that had been watered down and covered with wood shavings and hay. On either side of the three rings were bleachers and unsecured folding chairs. So you had bleachers on both sides and, and, and like kind of a, a crowd area for, for people to sit in, in folding chairs. Mm -hmm. There was one main exit outside the tent and eight smaller exits, but many of these had been blocked by wagons and other circus equipment. Of course they had. Ah. Uh. During the afternoon matinee, right after a performance of a French lion tamer, Alfred Court, the Flying Walendas, uh, who had very made, famous, extremely famous, yeah. who made their Ringling Brothers and Barter Bailing Circus debut in 1928, playing Madison Square Garden of, of no less, were set to go. While they were performing, the circus band leader immediately directed the band to play The Stars and Stripes Forever. Now, do you know what the significance of that is? No. When a band leader plays that for a circus, that means to tell all the people who work at the circus that there is trouble. 
Oh no! Right. So really? Like, yeah. So if you you know if you're is that like an un- did, yeah? Did you know that before this? I did not know that before. Oh wow! Doing okay. Research on that. But Stars and Stripes Interesting. forever when when it's played, it's it's a signal to the the circus performers and the circus people that there is some sort of trouble, and so it doesn't alert the audience. They don't want the audience to wow. panic. Wow! So you know, so. It's, that makes me wonder if I've ever because I've been to the circus a lot. Right, right. It's like, if so, I've ever heard it and not had any idea. Right. Okay. Uh, so interesting. So they played uh, Stars and Stripes Forever, uh, and which was a sign of distress to to all circus personnel. The band leader spotted flames cir- crawling up the circus tent sidewall. The ringmaster called out to the audience to not to panic, but the fire had shorted out the power, and so he wasn't heard. They tried to maintain some kind of order, but the panic of the crowd was overpowering. It became chaos. Oh, no. Ushers tried to douse the fire with water jugs that had been stationed around and to pull the canvas sections down uh, that were on fire, but it didn't work. When the fire was growing out of control, the ushers moved to help get the audience member out. The lions that had been performing before the flying Walindas were herded into a chute and led into a cage wagons uh, outside, and they escaped with only minor burns. So the cats made. I it. thought you were gonna say, and they escaped, and I was like, "Oh, this just adds to it." Okay, right. but no, but, okay. but the crowd wasn't so lucky. Oh, he escaped, but in the panic and hysteria, people were running in circles, looking around for loved ones instead of trying to escape the burning tent. Some escaped, but ran back to look for family members. Some just stayed in their seats, expecting the fire to be put out before they were overcome by smoke and flame before it could be. One survivor, Maureen uh, Creakin who was 11 at the time uh, and was in the bleachers, remembered, and she quotes, I remember someone yelling and seeing a big ball of fire near the top of the tent. And this ball of fire just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And by the time everyone was panicking, the exit was blocked with the cages that the animals were brought in and out with. And there was a man taking kids and flinging them up and over that cage so they could get them out. I was sitting up in the bleachers and I jumped down. I was three quarters of the way up. You... Um, you jump down and it was all the straw underneath. There was a young man, a kid who had a pocket knife and he slipped the tent, took my arm and pulled me out. That's wow. Um, Charles Nelson Riley's friend yelled fire as soon as he saw it. And the boys quickly knew they had to jump from the bleachers to escape. They escaped the burning tent as it was going up. And by the time they reached the parking lot, the tent was gone. It would later be reported that the tent didn't collapse. It evaporated. Oh, my oh. gosh. And this is why. The tent was waterproof with a formula of 1,800 pounds of paraffin wax that was dissolved in 6,000 gallons of gasoline. Oh, my stars. I, I feel like I should have <laughs> and stripes. Oh, my stars and stripes. I feel like I should have better commentary, but this is insane. Right, right. This is an insane story. So it was a common treatment uh, that had been used for decades, and because of rationing during World War II, it was thought this was the best way to keep the rain from soaking through the tent in case of a storm. A storm would ruin the circus, causing Ringling Brothers to give back money. Whoa. The paraffin wax was so hot it melted and rained on top of the evacuees as the tent vanished around them. Now, I think I've heard the paraffin wax... <sighs> Maybe I maybe I'm imagining that. I don't continue. No, that continue. is just wild. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I've seen that in a movie or something like that before, and I don't know where I've seen it. According to eyewitnesses, the tent collapsed in about eight minutes, trapping hundreds of spectators beneath it. Eight minutes. Yeah. Imagine it's six thousand pounds of gasoline. That's literally it's just gasoline in the ceiling. Yeah. So fire hits that on, on fire in the can- sky. Right. It's just a, fire in the sky. In a canvas tent. Woof. <sighs> there is no official count of the spectators but it was assumed around 7,000 people were involved. Of that, 168 people were killed, and that's the highest number that includes collecting a collection of unidentified body parts that were labeled as victims. Over 700 people were treated for various injuries, but that number may be skewed as many victims just went home instead of seeking treatment that day. So I'm trying to imagine this crowd because I'm going to be honest, when you first, I know you said it was huge, right? and I was trying to imagine it in my head. And I've been to the circus plenty of times. Never that scale. Right. The wharf in Orange Beach right. holds 10,000 people. So 7,000. Right. That is a ton of people, of people to so, get out in eight minutes. Right. In eight minutes. You can't. You can't do it. Oh, my god. You gosh. can't do it. And, and so. And there's oh, really no I've got chills right now. Right. <laughs> um, 
Most of the dead were found in piles, some three bodies deep near the exits. Just trying to cover each other up. No, that's because that's where they fell. They fell. And they get trampled. Most oh, God. People died by asphyxiation, burns, and trampling. Oh. But get this a small number of people were found alive at the bottom of these piles, protected by the bodies that were on top of them. Wow. When the tent finally came down. The best known victim of this fire was a young girl, blonde girl wearing a white dress. She was identified and was only known as Little Miss 1565, named after the number assigned to her body at the makeshift morgue. She was well preserved after her death and arguably became the most familiar image of the fire. We have a picture. Hmm. That's her. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can just see the burns on the side of the face. But yeah. other than that, right. it just looks like a sweet little blonde headed mm. girl. Her identity has been the topic of debate since the fire occurred. After not being identified, she was buried without a name. They just buried her under Little Miss 1565. The police investigators photographed her, took fingerprints, footprints, and general charts. The photograph was then published, the one I just showed you, uh, nationwide, in nationwide magazines, but she was never claimed. The investigators never stopped looking f until their deaths, which were in the, was in the 70s and 80s, and they decorated her grave with flowers every Christmas, Memorial Day, and July 4th. And after their deaths, a flower company took over and decorated the grave. In 1981, one of the investigators' widow had said that he had identified the child and contacted her family, but they had requested no publicity. In, 19, in 1987, someone left a note on the on the 1565 gravestone reading, Sarah Graham her na uh, her, is her name, 7638 day, date of birth, six-year-old twin. Uh, notes on a nearby gravestone uh, indicated that her twin brother and other relatives were buried nearby. In 1991, the body was declared to be Eleanor Emily Cook, an eight-year-old who was at the circus, though her aunt and uncle examined the body and it didn't fit the description they provided. Connecticut State Police compared hair samples and determined that they were probably from the same person. The body was exhumed and buried next to her brother, Edward, who also died in the fire. Here's a picture of... Okay, I'm going to let you finish. No, 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 go ahead. So this is bizarre to me. Right. So were the parents at the circus? Did they? I, you're probably uh, getting there. Yeah, there's, there's, okay, there's, you're there's getting there. You're getting there. there. Okay. Um, uh, the, the, like I said, the body was exhumed and buried next to her brother, Edward, who also died in the fire. Uh, two books on the subject, A Matter of Degree, written by Rick Davies and Don Macy, and The Circus Fire, which I have here, A True Story of an American Tragedy by Stuart Nan have different theories on the identity of Little Miss 1565. Uh, Eleanor's surviving brother tried to contact the brother, uh, the police in 1955, insisting that the girl was his sister, but nothing came out of it. He believed his family members were shown the wrong body at the morgue. Uh, Onan, in this book, has a different thought. He points out that the uh, 1565 uh, girl had blonde hair, uh, Cook was brunette, and the shapes of their face were different. Eleanor's mother also stated that it wasn't her daughter and maintained that stance until her death until 1997. She had been badly injured in the fire and was unable to claim her two dead children and too traumatized to pursue it later. Oh, wow. Onan thinks Eleanor was actually body number 1503, which was one of the two, uh, one of two children Ooh. burned beyond recognition. Oh my goodness. Even the cause of the fire was debated. Some believe it was to be arson or a carelessly, carelessly flicked cigarette. Teenager Robert Dale uh, Segi um, had confessed to starting the fire. In a police interrogation, he admitted to setting the circus fire and other fires and confessed to several murders during his youth. Boy, bye. Like, <laughs> he had what are you doing with your life? He had claimed he had a nightmare, which a Native American on a flaming horse commanded him to set fires. He okay. drew pictures. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, he drew pictures of it. That's his prison drawings. Ah, yes. <laughs> uh huh. That's a little horsey. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. And then that's just like a sea monster, is uh, what it looks like. Um, he wasn't charged. He was not charged. He was not charged. <clears throat> he admitted all this, and he was not charged. He was not charged. Do they think he was just crazy, and he was he, falsely? Well, he gets crazier, right? He was arrested six years later in Ohio for an unrelated arson charge and sentenced to 44 years in prison. 
though Connecticut started to doubt his claims due to his history uh, with mental illness. And then he recanted his confession many years later and would and was maintain his innocence of the Hartford fire until, <laughs> until uh, 97, right before he died. Um, Whoa. Yep. Okay. Ringling Brothers paid almost $5 million, which is equal to $52.7 million today, to 600 victims and families who fled who filed claims against them in, by 1954. But only 600 out of 7,000? Right. That's crazy. Right. You'd figure it would be more. Uh, uh, I think they went to, you know, who are severely are burned yeah. and or injured and then lost. Just lost. Yeah. And then uh, if you were, because it's the 40s and yeah. 50s, like you were traumatized, you can just, you know, rub some dirt on you. All right. Yeah. They never considered <laughs> Rub that. some dirt on it. Right. Because yeah. they you're never fine. Consider, right. You're fine. You're, you're fine. fine. You'll, you'll get yeah, No blood, no blood. Nobody, you're fine. Right. Five officials and employees of Ringling Brothers were charged with involuntary manslaughter. Four were convicted and given prison sentence, but were allowed to continue with the circus to set up the next stop, which was in Florida. They were shortly pardoned afterwards. Holy cow. So Connecticut gave him a show trial. Man, do you think that's because... <sighs> I feel like it's so much deeper. Right, right. Like right. people in people's pockets. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. That's all it is. I mean, if, if Ringling Brothers got five million dollars to pay people, and and you know, and let's say that's fifty-two million dollars right. today's money. Holy crap! Right. And especially when they can't figure out if it was arson or negligence or what. I mean, look, there. There's... So, do you think? Okay, let me ask you this. Sure. If um, so <clears throat> we have the song that signals that something's wrong, right. To the crew. To everyone on staff, <laughs> had we not taken the time to play a song, do you think we would have had more time to evacuate people? So I don't think that. I don't think they. Or do you I, think that was just like, see, hey, think, everybody on guard? Right. I don't think they. I mean, he saw the fire. The band leader sees the fire and strikes up the band to play. That's what he's trained to do. Right. So I don't think they played the entire song, but it's like, oh no, there's. I mean, it's 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 basically setting the fire alarm off. Right. But, okay. So, so, except the crowd doesn't know it's a fire alarm. Right. It's fire, okay. The crowd's not unaware of it being a fire alarm. And then the the ringmaster is doing his job, like, "Hey, everybody, we got to, you know, there's an emergency. We have to leave." But no one hears him because, because the power's the, out. The, the power's out. The short <laughs> fire. So it's this um collection of just events that keep top just right. You know, snowballing out of out of out of you know nothing in such advantage. a short so, period right. of time. Right. I mean, realistically, a fifteen-minute span. Fifteen minutes span of this entire thing, and probably less than that. Probably like ten minutes. Yeah. From the time they're they see fire to the time Charles Nelson Riley and his friend is outside the the tent when when it literally evaporates. I mean, from the time the fire started, right. really, to the time right. it evaporates, right. fifteen minutes total, total maybe total. Holy cow! Just think I about mean, the amount of lives changed in fifteen minutes. Absolutely, absolutely. It's just. It, it's, that it's is crazy. insane to me. Okay, I got to your. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I know you got more. No, no, I got. We got a little bit more. Okay. Too. But speaking about the people whose mm -hmm. lives changed, uh, notable survivors included Eunice Gorick, who would uh, grow up and become one of the first female lieutenant, well, the first female lieutenant gov uh, governor of Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Drummer Hal Blaine, who is estimated to be among the one of the most recorded studio drummers in history, claiming over thirty five thousand sessions. Uh, 600 singles, including 40 number ones, worked with Elvis, Frank Sinatra, Simon and Garfunkel, and others. Wow. The aforementioned Flying Wolandas. Mm -hmm. And Emmett Kelly, a famous clown who was uh, who created the uh, the created the figure Weary Willie based on hobos of the Great Depression. So if you see clown artwork and you see the hobo clown, mm -hmm. that's him. Okay. Like nationwide, that's gotcha. him. Um, there's a, I couldn't find it in the book, but I'll, I'll, put, I'll share it with you later. But, but there's a tragic photo of him with a pail of water at the burn down circus oh, right? when they're gosh. looking for people and stuff and it's like it's it, and the caption on it is the day the clowns cried and it's just like oh man and it's hard i saw this today and it's just heartbreaking oh, uh, it's God. i just and, oh. and finally charles nelson riley who would go on to do great things but the trauma of the fire haunted him into his death he rarely sat in theaters to watch shows, even the ones that he directed. And when he did, he was always near the exit. That, yeah. I mean, when you go through something like that. 
In 2004, ground was broken for, for a monument at the site where the fire occurred. It was dedicated on July 6, 2005. The memorial consists of several bronze plaques that describe what was happening at specific times during the fire. The center plaque sits exactly where the center ring on the big top was on July 6, 1944, and has the names of each victim of the circus embossed on it. A memorial was erected at the North Wood Cemetery in Windsor, Connecticut, and is inscribed as follows. This plot of ground, consecrated by the city of Hartford, as a resting place for three adults and three children who lost their lives in the circus fire, July 6, 1944. Their identities known only to God. Wow. During its final tour, Ringling Brothers and Bottom and Bradley Circus visited Hartford, Connecticut. And did a show? Yeah, did a show. Oh, okay. All right. How long after that was? Oh, that was that's just recently. Just was, yeah, just a few a few years ago. Oh, so that is the story of the Hartford Fire Circus Fire. How have I never heard that story? Yeah, I mean, I've heard some crazy circus stories before, like true crime wise, right. but I've never heard that one. Um, okay, I want your theory on the little girl. I because I I want to dig deeper. Like and now, I want to read this book. I want to. Well, I'll let you borrow it. Yeah, I will. I'm serious. I'll tear through it because this is the kind of stuff I love. But... So, so two, a couple of things. There is a chance that they were shown the wrong body, and um, the and you know couldn't identify her. And then I think they had this body. And they had, I mean, th this was kind of the thing that like they were sure they were going to. Oh, we'll have a picture. Someone will will claim this little girl, mm -hmm. and no one does. That's what's bizarre to me. But she, I mean, but in, not even that no one claimed her, but that in a smaller town, that's not a huge town, right? That no one was her neighbor or her school teacher or her Sunday school. Like someone would have recognized this eight year old little girl. So right, I think right, right. But I think it goes down to this. I think I think. Those people knew that she is one of the lost. She, you know, she didn't survive this fire, but is this body that girl? Yeah, but still, I feel like. Oh. And 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 when you saw the picture, but I'm not in that situation right. either. I'm also, not traumatized. I'm not right. But you also saw the picture, right? And we see the picture there, and I, I very different. I know. Right? She looked. I mean, she's not definitely not alive, and so and and she's also swollen. And, and well, the from, picture of her deceased right, compared to the family photo right, right. completely different They're different so yeah i can see where people are like not 100 percent sure um the hair color thing is a big big deal you know and he in this book like i said he kind of steers you in a different direction too wow. so huh i feel bad for the mother she loses yeah two terrible children. she loses two children and not only that i mean she's also badly burned in, in this thing and um you know i get it she's like i she's too traumatized to claim her children it's just too painful oh you can't imagine oh it's i can't yeah. um so did you say how many people that worked for the circus no, not, they didn't say i mean, I mean it's there's it's in there I because it makes it. you wonder i mean conspiracy wise my my head starts <laughs> blowing up at stuff like this i'm like uh, did somebody want this to happen who was in whose pockets what was it worth to them who I, was there that this could have been an inside job. I mean, of course, I don't, I don't think that's what it is, but it could be. I watch too many I, true crime shows for it not to be a question. If I was a betting man and had a time machine, like we'd place a bet and go find out what somebody happened. Somebody threw a cigarette down. I think it's somebody threw a cigarette. I think it, it was the forties. Everybody smoked. Right. I think it. I think it was. There was pure, hay. Yeah. The, <laughs> right. I mean, like you know, you know, as I was building the story, there's all this flammable stuff. Yeah. It just gets flammable. And then you then then you realize, oh, the tent's literally gasoline and paraffin wax. Holy mm -hmm. shit. All right. Sorry. So, <laughs> no, no, Holy no, crap. No, 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 no. I mean, we're an explosive podcast. Holy shit works. Wow. And this was a daytime show. Yeah, this is a matinee. This is his mother telling him I want it to burn down. Hope it burns down. Gee, did he ever say, hey mom? Like, did he come home and be I, like, I hey, know, mom, guess what happened? I don't know if he confronts her. With anything. soot on say. his face? So, like, so. <laughs> hey, mom, guess what happened I, today? I first heard this story. Um, there's a documentary. I think it's called Wrath of God. It was on the History Channel, like, early 2000s. And uh, I saw it one late night. And it's, like, it gets spooky. Yeah. Like, especially when they're talking about the, the dead little girl. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, you know, like, is this dead little girl in my, my house kind of thing? 
<laughs> right. Yeah. So that's every- my next story. Like, is there a ghost of her? You know. <laughs> right. Like- right. And so it would probably be easier to be like, and what's your name? Yeah. So we figure you out. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But um, before Charles Nelson Riley died, he did a one man show that was his life. Mm-hmm. And they recorded it for a movie. They made a they made a, a documentary kind of style film of it. They, and um, there's a section on the hot for fire fire. I'll send it to you. Okay. I'll post it yeah, in yeah, too, do that for me because because you hear him just explain it, and it's it's short, it's like five minutes, but it's I mean it is it is heartbreaking watching because you can tell he is in his 80s by the time he does this show. It was 13 at the time, and it's fresh. He remembers every detail. It's fresh. I can't imagine something like that would ever get blurred. No. And, it's just like, and no I mean, we've much. all been through our own traumas in life, but oh, something that... I, mean, I, I didn't put this in the, in, the, in the story, but the research was, they were talking to survivors who are you know, way adults now. They're like, mm-hmm. I was six at the time. I will never forget the smell of burning flesh. Oh, my God. And she, you know, she's like Oh, 70. that makes me want to cry. Right. He's like, you can't oh. escape that trauma. It's just like... It's, and again, 15 minutes at the most. At the most. At the most. How many lives were changed that fast? Right. That was that was wild. That was wild. Thank you, Jonathan, for coming. Thanks in. for having me. I can't wait to come back. If you're pressing out, I hold on you. Here's what you gotta do. Bring home all the action. You'll get more satisfaction when you bring home all the action. Get a grip. Get a lock. So let's 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 tack on to that sh- showmanship. Um, so this was last year. I think this was last year. Um, you and I are having a conversation, and then out of the blue, you say, which I would. I would definitely say, are you crazy? Oh, yeah. I just bought a wrestling company. Who the fuck does that? This guy. This dude, right? <laughs> right, right like, like, you're my second interview on the show the, the, uh, where my question is, first, are you crazy? And B, who the fuck does that? And then the other guy is my friend Jared Budlong, who's running for governor. And so so running for governor, wrestling, is, <laughs> which is kind of the same thing. But I'm Him like, I need to get together. <laughs> yeah, I like crazy people like that. Right, so I'm just like. Um, and I, I, I want you to tell the story, but your grandfather has a background, ha, had a background, yes. gra- so the, it's in your blood. So is it, this is not like out of the yeah. blue, but well, so I've been a huge wrestling fan for because that's your nerdum. That, that's your nerdum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know, wrestling, and you know, it's just so cliche, but I guess it's true. You know, like sometimes when people go through a hard time, they're like, oh, so-and-so was always there for me. You know, and I always hear that. I'm just like, whatever. But, like, when I went back to think about it, that was awesome. Right. You know, like, you know, we had, and there'd be times where we had no power or no food, or my dad would be on drugs or drunk or beaten, you know, and it was just like, it was just something to focus on. And I could, you know, suspend my disbelief. I know, you know, it's it's not real, you know, or what not right but you know i could suspend my disbelief in it and just get lost in it for a couple of hours and um i grew up watching it i, I started watching it in 92 um and by the time i was a teenager uh like 15 16 17 is when the attitude era kicked in mm-hmm. so i mean you know it was just like i was going through all this adolescence and then it was in the attitude era so it was just you know the perfect storm you know so wise. so when you were first watching who who, uh, who are you admiring who who was your wrestlers uh so bret hart yeah. uh undertaker who literally just retired just retired uh, last yeah, year yeah. And, and he was in a hall of fame last night his speech was really good. was it good yeah um and uh so undertaker made me sad watching that it makes me feel old uh undertaker bret hart um Macho Man was always fun. I loved his oh yeah, his, his personality right. and his out there. Uh, you know, I'd go back and watch like all the old tapes. Like, remember Eckerd's? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we'd go to Eckerd's, and you know, my mom would go like pick up a prescription for my dad. Or right, you go. Yeah, we had to get like a little ninety nine cent tape, and you know, yeah. I'd read all the back of them and see which matches. You know, like this one's got four matches. I want to see this one's only got three, so I'm gonna get one with four. Four, right, right. So uh, I used to do all that, but uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I like Sting. Uh, 
So I was never a WCW guy, but I tell you, because I didn't have cable. Right. And so you could only watch WCW on cable. So it never, you know, never syndicated very right. well. So I live, when I grew up, I, we lived basically in the boonies, you know, in North Baldwin County. And so, mm-hmm. however, and, and like, I, I've had a couple of phases of wrestling in my life because I, I enjoy it, but I'm not, I'm not the super fan that you are. Right. Um, um, but I, I appreciate it because I, I think it's, it's, fa- it's, it's, you know, the athleticism is great. Some of the storylines are just crazy. Mm-hmm. I mean, just, just insane. But so, um, as I mentioned before, I'm a huge Saturday Night Live fan. I have been a Saturday Night Live right. fan most of my life. Um, and, um, in middle school and high school, after SNL, they would show Saturday night main event, WWF, mm-hmm. when it was WWF at the time. So, and this is at your golden era. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, but it's pre attitude, but you still got, you got Hulk, Hulk, Hulk Hogan still, still wrestling. Mm-hmm. You've got Macho Man's wrestling, Ultimate Warriors wrestling. Undertaker's just started. So it's him and right. Paul Bear, who's from Mobile. And Paul, right. Paul Bear's from yep. Mobile. And so, and that's, I mean, for me, Undertaker was great because I mean I, I was a horror film kid, and so yeah. I was like, and you had this weird dude who was just like, oh, Undertaker yeah. <laughs> with the urn, and just like, what am I watching? And it's got it just was so magical and crazy, and and it was like, this definitely wasn't my father's wrestling, you know, the, yeah. the, the, back when it was. It's yeah. all character. It's all character. You know, there was the clown and the prison mm-hmm. and the, the you know the police officer. Oh, the, the big the, boss the, man. Yeah, yeah. And, and then you remember the the. The, the inmate was nails yeah know? yeah and yeah like you know and then there was like the repo man and <laughs> there was like bastard booger i don't even know what that was like the slob right i don't know what that guy was <laughs> you know like you know but but it, remember yeah. the the legion of doom had the, yeah, the lod the, lod had the, had the the spike 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 yeah. football and shoulder pads the beverly brothers <laughs> oh yeah you know, they, they, they always had like, you know, they were graduates or something. You know, they were smarter than everyone. You know, their manager is Macho Man's brother. Yeah. Uh, yeah Larry, Larry uh, Papo. Papo. Yeah. yeah. Papo. Um, um, who uh, is cool. Cool. I don't, I, I only know about him. I missed Larry's wrestling stuff. Yeah. And, 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 and when I, I think, I think he was on the way doing like behind the scenes stuff by the time I started watching. So I just missed him. But, um, uh, our friend Kevin Laporte has inverse spread or uh, flatline comics. Now um, they do squirrel circle. And so they did his autobiography and I've done their Kickstarter and, re- and stuff. Yes. And so, so I got to see a lot about Larry Popo who is fascinating, yes. just a fascinating guy. And so, but yeah, I mean, uh, like, I, and not, and, and also Macho Brand's brother, but he's, uh, yeah. you know, but all those times were, were the greatest, but you know, over a period of time, there's only so many ways you can play out the gimmick. Right, right. You know, there's so many clowns, or you know, yeah, you can have so many doinks. Yeah, yeah. So you know, over over that period of time, it just kind of got to where it was played out. And I think that was what was interesting about the Undertaker. Yeah, it was like that was like the one kind of gimmick that just lasted for decades. Right. You know, and like he kept reinventing himself whenever it was important, and it was still true to the same character, just different variations. Yeah, I, he I, was. I, Super evil or a, a biker. Or, the biker thing know. was a little weird for that's, me. That's but, the one I didn't care for. That was that was my least favorite. Because it's not to me. It's still not the Undertaker. The Undertaker needs a supernatural as a right, body. right. But but I mean, in real life, he he's a Harley. Yeah, that, that that's who he to be. Style, what right? what he wanted to be. But uh, I, I I just I love the storytelling. I love the throwbacks. I love I love everything about. Yeah. And I was a huge Star to Star fan mainly because of GI yeah. Joe. And I've met him on a couple occasions, and he is, you know, you've met a lot of wrestlers. You just did a wrestling convention a couple I, weeks ago. He was there. Yeah, I hate that I missed because I would have gone. Just, just yeah. so, Sergeant Slaughter has and knows this. He he has two distinct fandoms. He has a wrestling, a diehard wrestling fandom, mm-hmm. and a diehard GI Joe fandom, mm-hmm. and, and they cross. And sometimes they cross. Yeah. And so, and but he treats them both. Equally with reverence and loves both those fans. I've I've met a lot of celebrities. I've never met someone who's just like I'm. You know, I met him in my 40s, right. and I was talking to him about the cartoon like he was on, like he actually did those things, and he just was playing along with me. It was the, <laughs> but he, he was like us, yeah, 66, huh? <laughs> but but, but he's right. But he's not like yeah. I mean, I, you know, I punch Cobra Commander in the face. I'm like, I know this isn't real, but he's literally talking to the eight year old version of me, right. and he mm-hmm. knows it. And he knows that makes my day. Yep. And like I'm I'm now talking about three years later. And so it's it's so funny, like you you're talking about heroes and stuff. It's just it's 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 so interesting how that, that stuff comes up. But that, that was my era. I loved 
that two kind of the ones I met at that con yeah. that didn't like, oh man, that's this person. You know what I mean? Hmm. But there was two of them that really got me. Jake the Snake. Oh yeah. Who is is larger than life. Absolutely. I, I don't even know how to explain it, but he had definitely a presence about him. Did you did you see the Andre oh, yeah. documentary when you talk about how he was driving Andre around? Yeah. And just like oh. and he tells the best stories. Uh so Jake the Snake was definitely one and uh Diamond Dallas Page. Yeah. That I think he's in his sixties, like yep. sixty five or something. And he was the youngest person in the room. And I'm not even absolutely yeah. I mean, he he had so much energy I mean, and charisma and, and, and positivity. <laughs> he's he's definitely like when we were watching those guys were getting up there anyway. Yeah. And now they're really getting up there. It's like like Hacksaw Jim Jim Duggan. He was there. Who who's great and he's also great with fans too. So it's like it's it's I'm glad I'm glad this is an avenue for for them because they deserve it i mean you know and so but i'm glad like there's, you know i've met some celebrities who don't who don't get it uh, and not in wrestling but in other genres and i'm just like you know you don't have to be here you, you don't you know it, it's the money that important to you and if that more you're an actor pretend like you're having a good time i've seen them who don't and it's weird to me it's like, like, like why even go why why yeah. why why be a part of this? I'll call him out. Mar Michael Dorn. I will, hey, twice he has been terrible. He's Worf on Star Trek. Uh, okay. He's just both times just been like. Doesn't want to be there. And the first time you're just like, okay, he's having he's a bad bad day. Maybe he's hungover. He's not feeling well or whatever. Right. It's just like, no, you clearly don't want to be here. Right. So don't. I don't need you here. It's just weird. It's just, anyway. But wrestlers I've met have all been great. But yes, yeah, so my era was that that whole Saturday night at SNL, and then I mean, just, and then I'd go to bed like two o'clock in the morning. So, it was a good time. oh god, it's great. There's nothing like. It. I mean, I I think wrestling's fine now. I I like. Um, I I've recently got turned on the AEW. Mm -hmm. I like what they're doing. Um, and mainly because uh, you know, Pentagon, I got to, um, moderate an interview. Um, uh, Ruby Soho. And she's, she's she is, and she's fascinating. Like not what you expect. She's this tattooed punk rock chick, right. nicest person on the planet, right. just the sweetest person on the planet. It's like I could actually just hang out with you. Right. But out of that, you've now got a mega fan. I'm like I'm, uh, yeah, I'm waiting for her to wrestle. I'm like I'm, 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 you know. And our friend Drew, who's a huge, he's a wrestling fan too, and so he yeah. he's the one who's really turned me on to AEW. He's been mentioning it for years. Like oh yeah, you need to watch. It's not like because you know. You know, wrestling is changing and it's evolving. It's trying to figure out what it want, want to do. And yeah. you know, for a while, WWE is kind of was absorbing everything and was coming to one thing. But I, the, you know, you've, you've got these other pockets that are coming this around. This is an, an alternative, and it's uh it's become a viable alternative. Absolutely, absolutely. Which leads to to you and buying a. How does this fall in your hands? So, uh, I'm surfing Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> And this pops up for so, sale wrestling. Gun. Yeah. Yeah. So the first one that popped up happened right during COVID. Right. I mean, it had camera equipment, lighting, everything. And I came really close to getting that one, but I passed. Uh, it's just too much going on. Right, right, right. Uh, and then another one popped up and it had the right price. And I ended up snagging it up. And uh, so had, had you been thinking about it or it was just. An impulse buy. buy, and it's weird to say that that's like an impulse buy, but it's because yeah. they're like, I would never think to look on Facebook Marketplace for a wrestling company. I wasn't looking. I know, right? But so I was like, yeah. And at first of all, I was like, who puts a wrestling like? In my mind, I didn't even see that working, so I would never think of that as an avenue. Which now means I'm going to check Facebook Marketplace for everything for now on. Yeah, I just yeah. like it's just like a lesson learned in this. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, I. I got it, but like, you know, there's still some things going on, but I started working on like some TV deals and stuff like that. And then another one came up and I got it. And I was like, you know, I can get it because it's already running. We can use it to test for the TV stuff for the other one. You uh, bought two. Yeah. I say I only knew about the one. I thought you only yeah, bought the one. Yeah. So th this so, is the breaking news. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so we kept the second one running. I haven't done anything with the first one yet. We right. don't have the assets and stuff. Uh, but we kept the second one running and when I purchased it, take away me, Liz, uh, Brent and Haley, which is the four people who went to, you know, we were together. Brent is the booker for the show. So we all went to watch the show, right? you know, finalize the deal and stuff like that. So, 
take away those four and their show had 87 people. So I, uh, I went in a town in November. So Brent ran the November show, built a new stage. We got new logos. Uh, he basically did it all solo, like by himself. And he, he kicks butt, man. And, uh, we got, uh, out the same number of people like maybe a little bit more but you gotta think that was thanksgiving weekend right which is also black friday oh, yeah, which yeah. is also uh football right mm, yeah. iron iron bowl yeah, right? Iron weekend and... yeah yeah so uh you know i thought that was a win considering absolutely you know, and then in december we had to run on the third saturday instead of the fourth because we always run on the fourth saturday uh and we had uh around 150 people right so you know, we're, we're starting to, to, to build up, but like, you know, we're, we were booking, instead of booking as if we had 80 or hundred people, we were booking as if we had 200 people. Right. So now, you know, I'm really good at pouring gasoline on the fire, you know, <laughs> so I'm, I'm just adding fuel to the fire and Brent's doing his thing and we're just doing great stuff. And it just keeps growing, growing. And I told everyone in February, I was, uh, Brent and I had talked and we we're like, is what we're going to do. And we'd come up with our plans because, you know, some of their storylines they had going, we kind of had to tie up, right. and, you know, start our own stuff and everything. So we kind of put a plan and we're like, in February, it's about to go down, you know? So everything was kind of coming to a head and they're like, this is a show you don't want to miss. So on and so forth. And we announced Sabu for the show. Uh, the day of the show, Sabu missed his plane. <laughs> So we had two surprises. Sabu was going to be a meet and greet. Uh, we had Al Snow there, and mm -hmm. we had Tommy Dreamer. So Al Snow took uh, Sabu's place for the meet and greet. Al Snow, by the way, incredibly smart, incredibly gifted mind for the wrestling business. Funny, I sat in his seminar, and he must have did 75 your mom jokes <laughs> i mean he, he, it was and he is beautiful he'd always find a new way to do it so uh so he he did that he did a great job and we did our show and it was just it was just different it wasn't like any show that you'd seen around the area like it looked like it was ready for tv drew mm -hmm. came and uh helped helped uh record and produce it uh we had a whole bunch of controversy in the show and instead of being upset over the controversy we just leaned into it so is that the one you got shut down yeah so um tell the story because this is great okay <laughs> so uh i have a lot of haters uh <laughs> In starting this, you know, a, a lot of people upset because I'm doing a wrestling, you know, because wrestling back in the day was really territorial, but then Vince kind of stopped that, right? you know, so it's okay for Vince, but now it's still not okay for others. You know, it's, it's confusing. You know, I was trying to figure out territory math the other day and I'm really good at math and I got confused. So, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, the, the speculation is because they said they had screenshots and stuff. The speculation is, is that uh, either, you know, a friend or a, a talent or a, an, another promoter or somebody uh, turned us in uh, to multiple things to like uh, the venue, the city of Pascagoula, the fire marshal and the Mississippi athletic commission. Uh, so we had to meet with the venue people. Uh, and at first, like in our January show, they said we couldn't use this cold spark machine, which is cold. Mm hmm. Like you could put your face over it. You right. Know? So uh, anyway, we couldn't use that for, for January, but after bringing them the paperwork and showing them what it would, was, they allowed us to use it for February. Um, but, the, you know, like the fire marshal and stuff was involved in it and whatnot. So it just kind of got blown up to something that it shouldn't have. Right, right, right. Um, so the city asked us if we're going to be doing a death match. If there's going to be knives and guns. So, you know, on my page, I had been promoting this February show, which was like an extreme show, right? Right. So I, I'd ordered a bunch of barbed wire and I was just wrapping things in barbed wire. Like, you know, I wrapped a baseball bat, I wrapped a steel chair. I was just wrapping stuff in barbed wire. Like when I do it, I 
cut myself. I wasn't wearing gloves, you know, like, ow, you know, like, like zoom in on a little bit of blood on my hand or whatever, you know? Uh, so, you know, and I, I was like, you know, the show's going to be awesome. You know, who we got some steel chairs in today. You know, I was doing a bunch of unboxing of right, right, right. items for the thing. We got some, some canes and stuff, you know? And, uh, you know, some people don't really know what pro wrestling is. Now, these people really are taking moves and these moves really don't feel good. I know I've gotten a couple of them. You know what I mean? Like, right, but, but, it's, but, it's, but they're not really trying to kill each other. No, but it's, like, but and, it's, it's, it's a, it's a show. Right, right. It's a uh, show, but it's, but it takes skill and, and training athletic and, and athletic and, 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 and athletics involved, you know? Right. So, uh, so anyway, we had to kind of explain to them what was up. So some of the things that, that we had, uh, did not get approved. So I'd ordered some thumbtacks. Those did not get approved. Um, the barbed wire we could not use. Uh, so there's just a handful of items that uh, when the athletic commission came in, they said, these are items you cannot use. So we kind of had to edit our show. Right. Right. Um, that's all right. That's fine. You know, we, we still put on a really good show. But uh, some of the items that were on the table that, that, that we could use were uh, we had some beer bottles. We had uh, like uh, some metal like barbed wire type stuff and uh, some forks and a stick right and these items were good to go athletic commission right, right. so uh you know the, the the big spot at the end was going to be the thumbtacks right uh so we couldn't do that so uh we kind of took this stick it was uh ty's idea he's like this death match guy you know what i mean um which is another reason i think that we got in trouble because like he's like known as like a death match king or death match champion so, or something like that for, for people we, are, for, we didn't run a death match yeah for for, for people who are unfamiliar with wrestling the term death match just seems scary yeah it does um typically like death matches like uh the, the, there's a thing called gcw and they use like light tubes and glass and stuff like uh go on a and e and watch the nick gauge uh uh, the dark side of wrestling or whatever. Right. And it'll kind of give you an idea. It used to be like these backyard wrestlers that, you know, would just like try to stab each other with glass tubes. So like, we're not trying to kill each other. Like, you know, most people have family right, you know, right, right. 40 hours a week. <laughs> this is know. a job. Yeah. 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 You know, like, yeah. you know, they don't mind a little bit of pain. But, right, but, you know, yeah, I got to go to work on Monday. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> also I'm not wanting to die. <laughs> right. Right. You know, which is, you know, but, but when you hear death match, that's why they ask us about knives and guns and stuff. So uh, <laughs> my question would be like, have you seen wrestling? Who right. Is which it? is exactly what so, yeah, that's like, 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 do you even know what pro wrestling is? Have you ever watched an episode? You right, know, right. Like, yeah, I don't remember guns in pro wrestling. Right. So, and you know, even if you take what our show was and compare it to what you see on TV, it was nothing like that, right? But like, to me, re when you're selling wrestling, you're selling an idea of anything can happen, right? Or what could happen, right? And when you can suspend that disbelief and, oh man, that was crazy, or did that really happen? I don't think that was supposed to happen or, you know, something to that extent, or I bet that really hurt right, you know? right. or, or, or something like that. Like that's when you got them. You know what I mean? Cause I know as a fan, cause I'm a huge fan that that's what I like. So, you know, how can I do that to other people? You know what I mean? Or, or what can we do to kind of push the envelope across the line? So anyway, all these items were, were approved individually. We put them together. Uh, as as referee uh, Evan said, we made a, a Christmas tree of death. It was just the <laughs> stick with beer bottles all wrapped around it with athletic tape with fork and the barbed wire stuff like around it, right? So it was like this, this huge weapon of death, right? So when he comes out to the ring, he's got the stick, but there's like a bag over it. So you really can't see what it is, right? So I'm literally standing there like next to the athletic commission, uh, next to the guy. And he was like, oh, this is a really cool show, blah, blah, blah. He's just sitting there watching. We're just shooting the shit. Right, 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 right. right. Uh, and towards the end of the match, you know, he he pulls it. And I don't even remember, like, like what was going to, you know, go, go down or whatever. But, like, he pulls out this weapon and holds it up. And the commissioner's like, what's that? That wasn't approved. And just starts walking towards the ring. So I'm, like, trying to follow him, like, answering him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, these are all the things that were on the table. He said it was okay, you know, but he's not even hearing me. Right. And he just walks up there, and he's like, hey, bud, can't use that. Can't use that, right? Well, Ty Blade, like, literally looks at him and hits him anyway. <laughs> okay? So... 
the guy's like, it's uh, over, shut it down. It's done. <laughs> right. And I'm like, so so part of the, the blurred line we'll, we'll we'll unveil a little bit, right? Right. Uh is that at the end of the show, they were gonna do a huge brawl to set oh up my. for uh, to, to set up for like another match, right? So uh you know, after the bell rang or whatever, they were going to still go to each other. We had security on standby. We had half the locker room on standby waiting to, to come pull these people apart. Right. right. Um, so when when he says shut it down, the, there's a delay in the bell ringing. You know, the uh, Brent was like, uh, due to stoppage of the show, the state athletic, I mean, you know, like right, it, was, right. it was very, very confusing. Well, the show must go on. So the brawl afterwards ensued. Well, he looked angry. <laughs> you know, this dude said, shut it down. And I think he meant like, turn the lights off, go home. Right? So, you know, this brawl is going on. And I just see him like, I just, I, I can sense like every 30 <laughs> seconds, this dude's getting, and it feels like it lasted 15 minutes, you know? So, uh, anyway, long story short, the brawl finally ends and, uh, you know, we get a letter from them. Uh, the two participants got fined. We got fined, but we just kind of leaned into it. First off, I think that was the best finish that could have ever had. Absolutely. I mean, like it was like so controversial. I mean, if and, I was in the audience, it gives me something to talk about. Right. Right. Absolutely. Um, the, the, after talking to them, uh, you know, I was like, you know, all these weapons were approved individually. That's like saying chocolate chips. Okay. You know, butter. Okay. Sugar. Okay. Flour. Okay. Cookies. Not okay. Right. I can't bolt on this stuff together. <laughs> right. Right. So, you know, uh, they never really apologized. They were just like, it appeared to be, an unapproved weapon, you know. So uh, we got. I'm pretty sure the fine came from the, the brawl that happened afterwards. Well, while the brawl is going on, the venue people walk over with a phone in their hand, trying to call the cops because they think it's real, <laughs> right? So, uh, so, 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 so we're like, mm -mm, mm -mm, right? Well, Monday I have a call with the athletic commission. Wednesday we get a letter in. Good to go. We can still run because we don't know if we're going to shut down. Right, right, right. right. Like, like, well, what are they going to do? Like, there's no rules that say if you do this against us, you know what happens. Right. Yeah. And, am I out of business? Like, what's going to happen? You know. So, uh, everything's good. Got a fine. I'm like, look at the fine. I was like, it's worth the publicity, right? So, cost uh, doing business. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, okay, cool. You know, Ty got banned from Mississippi. That's cool. There's other states. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I, I paid his fine for him because he wasn't going to pay it. Right. That's crazy. He was like, I'm not paying that. Can't wrestle in the state anyway. What's the matter? You know? So I was like, <laughs> okay, I'm paying your fine for you. So anyway, that guy's really a lunatic. Like, <laughs> he's, he's so crazy. Can't so, give him a show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, like, Ty, why are you crazy? <laughs> yeah, he's like, uh, uh, a serial sociopath. Like he, <laughs> he doesn't care. He's, he's like literally like kind of like Sabu. He just put his body on the line just, you know, to hurt the other person. Right. Hopefully more, you know. So uh, anyway, Wednesday. Yes, we're in the free, right? A few days later, we get a text from the venue saying we're not welcome back oh. after last month's incidents. Right. So then we spend like it was uh, spring break weekend. So we couldn't find a venue in Pascola, and we start, you know, we waited too long. We knew, not like we waited too long, but we you... searched. We searched too long in Pascola because that's where we were running. Right, right, and yeah, and and you just got kicked out of this other venue. So mm -hmm, yeah, you're right. not not so, prepared for that. So we announced our next show Tuesday, and it was on a Saturday, where it was going to be. Right, and we still drew like 150 people, which is not like our last number. No, but, but not bad on four days' the, notice. The four, yeah, right. Absolutely, yeah. four days' notice. So. uh so that show was crazy. That's where uh, this guy named Kaiser. Yeah, I'm disappointed in you. And uh, <laughs> Mr. Ice T uh, blindsided MT2. MT2 uh, got injured, uh, separated shoulder, dislocated shoulder, something like that. And uh, they basically did like a double turn on him, you know, and beat the crap out of him and cut his hair. This dude had hair like down to his ass. <sighs> And they cut like, Dick move. Yeah. Dick they, move. They, they cut his hair off. And then uh 
uh, the ring announcer got put through the stage. Dick move. Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 so at this point in time, so ever since the show, which happened last Saturday, the inmates are running the asylum, right? Like every time we try to focus on one person who's, you know, doing wrong, three other ones pop up. And it's like, we just can't seem to get control of all these like crazy out of control wrestlers who all want their spot and you know to do what they want essentially uh mac daddy's the person who got hit with the weapon he's our champion he got hit with the weapon in february so he had I've seen a couple of his videos yes yeah, yeah, really on your yeah so page. he had uh he had his match uh last saturday it was against a guy named bam bam bunny this 400 pound guy super athletic or like how athletic could you be at 400 pounds right Really athletic. He's like Spider Man. Yeah. <laughs> like a fat yeah, Spider Man. Exactly. <laughs> He's like a Spider Man in a big suit. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. So, uh, to tilt the odds, because Duds always comes out there with 27 people in his corner and. You know, he's he's known to bend the rules in his favor because he doesn't want to lose that belt, you know? Uh, so, Brent said, if you get disqualified or someone interferes or something like that, Instead of facing one loss, you're facing two losses. And it was an Iron Man match. An Iron Man match is 30 minutes, or you choose a time. This one was 30 minutes. And um, the most pinfalls at the end of that time win. Right. So the match starts with Bundy getting duds. He beat, roughs him up a little bit and he grabs him and he walks around the crowd. And he lets every, not every member, but lots of members in the crowd chop duds. Just right, right, <laughs> right around. Well, Duds walked out with. Uh, a fan named Mini Mac, who's a little kid who dresses just like him. It's the coolest kid I've ever met. Uh, he came out there with his belt, walked around. They put him up and said, "Well, Dud's got back control," and he grabbed he grabbed Bundy and walked over the Mini Mac, and Mini Mac chopped him just like all the other fans. Oh, fans done. He got disqualified. Oh, so now he's down two losses, right? Then something else happens. He poked the guy in the eye. The referee saw it disqualified then something else happened like his security because he walks around with his own security you know uh because he messed over tie blade so uh his security grabs the, the guy's feet disqualified this happens over and over and over again bundy hits him in his finisher gets a one two three pin at one point in time in the match it's 11 to zero there's five minutes left in the match roughly right and uh bundy's gonna win the title and the fans are just going ape shit, right? Like, finally, Dud is going to lose, right? Uh, Brent looks happy because he's the one who's been trying to get Dud to stop cheating. And it's and Dud's is spiraling. Like, every time something happens. And sometimes something happened. It wasn't even his fault. But right. he, got, he got hit for it, you right. know? Um, so he's on the outside of the ring. And the guy grabs him and pulls him up on the apron. And the security guy, his, his security guy, boss move security, reaches on the ring and pulls out the same freaking weapon that got us got you banned. banned. Right. Got okay. You, got, got yeah. You, got the, you. the same freaking weapon that got us banned and uh, hands it to Duds. Now I say the same weapon. It's the same weapon. Duds said, and I quote, Ty has no taste. He blinged it out. It is now Mac daddy approved. Cause there ain't no slacking in his Mac. Yeah. yeah. Per his, per his thing. But it's essentially the same weapon, except for he put gold tape on it instead of black. Oh, and the wow. forks are now gold instead of black. <laughs> anyway, he takes, so, this thing. so he likes shiny things, right? Yeah, yeah, I he got gold. you. He likes, shiny so, things. so he takes this thing and the guy's got it from behind. He doesn't even see him grab it. And he goes, bink. And glass just goes, Ever. Oh, uh, I mean, it was crazy. This dude goes down, and I mean, like, it was like a sequoia tree falling, right? Just boom. And Duds runs in there and pins him. So, so in this match, there was two referees, one on the outside, one on the inside. So, because we didn't want no one referee gets knocked out. And right, happens, right, right, right. You want to so cover everything. Like, yeah, we covered all the bases. All right. right. So, Duds calls the other referee in. Points at this referee. One, two, three. Points at that referee. One, two, three. Points at this referee. One, two, three. <laughs> He's just racking up when after him. this dude is knocked the fuck out. Right, he's not getting back up now. Yeah, he's not getting back up, right? And he's anyway, been hit by the weapon. <laughs> and then does start showboating. And he gets up and he like puts his foot on him and he flexes one, two, three. And then he, he flips over here and he flips over there, right? And he racks up uh like I think 15 wins and Bundy finally kicks out. Like he wakes up, right? So now it's like 11 to 15, right? So uh, 
Duds, no, no. I think Bundy kicked out at sorry. Bundy kicked out at thirteen. Duds runs and grabs a fork off of the weapon and stabs Bundy in the head. Going to, uh, no, no. Duds was at fifteen, right? So, so it puts Bundy at thirteen, 13 right? Right. So he gets disqualified, and then uh, Duds kicks him out of the ring, and now he just stalls for thirty seconds until the match is over. Uh, Bunny tried to get him in the finisher. The fans are trying to cheer for him to, to come back, but there's just not enough time, and Duds won. So, you know, like, that's what Brent's trying to handle is how do you do something with this champion? You know what I mean? Right. And he brings the weapon back, and the commissioner wasn't there. He was there all night long. All night long. Wasn't there during the match. At that WrestleCon, we saw him interacting or sorry, a fan saw him interacting with the million dollar man. Ted and, they, and they sent us a message picture of it. Right. And then another fan said they saw it as well. Right. So like, I don't know if there's something going on there, like, or what the deal is, but how come? Oh, and oh, that's right. And duds before this show announced that he's the one who called the commissioner. That he's the one who started all of this stuff because so collusion. Well, no, but because uh, he knew Ty Blade was going to take it too far, and now he never has to worry about him again. So, like, is he paying off this commissioner dude to, you know, like anyway? Ah. It's just a it's a big cluster. So now, because the referees are tired of getting beat up and security's tired of getting beat up, uh, the ring announcer who went through the stage, his dad's also a referee. They're all going on strike. I mean, there's like videos of where they're going on strike. Fans are messaging me all the time, like asking me how we're going to run the show. You know, I mean, like I got other referees that have messaged us and other security people that, you know, offered to do it. Right. You know what I mean? But like, it's just the inmates are running the asylum. And you rock a fine line with that because you bring in other people. It's like bringing in scabs. Right. And so, you know, you know, I know how that goes. So that, right. that might not work out for you. That's right. So anyway, <laughs> that's where we're at. It's been literally crazy but ever since the february show like we got two thousand new followers in like 30 days it's been insane so uh before we let you go uh we've got two things um because we're, we're running long on this and this has been fascinating but i want to cover everything we want to cover um you have something you want to share with us i do we're gonna do an unboxing all right we're gonna do an unboxing all right and we got a camera right where, right there for you. Let, right. me, let me actually adjust it a bit so we can see it better when you open it. Oh, this way. You know, you never know when you need an unboxing. I mean, if you watch the other shows, we, we do them quite often. Thank you, Kisa. <laughs> <laughs> so we order a lot of stuff uh, to do for, for for raffles. And then it's kind of like you with your toys. Right, right, right. right. You know, you're going to sell something, but until then, it's like my precious. Right, right. Right. So that's that's kind of like me. So uh, we got this for raffle, uh, but also it's it's my precious. Uh, so these are nameplates uh, and some jewels. He sent us some extra jewels just in case we we lose some but this is uh a replica of this again replica belt yep a replica of a very popular belt you'll probably remember well no you said you really watch much wcw back in the day yeah no we just wasn't available for us this is so a, i missed out on sting and rick flair and A replica of the WCW United States Championship. Oh, well, look at that. That's pretty sweet. So that will be one of our raffles for one month. Uh, so we got that. I'll let you yeah. display that one. And then we've got this one. 
which I'm really excited for. I know it's going to be heavy. Yeah, it's heavy. I've just always wanted to do this. Right? <laughs> Isn't that awesome? This is what I'm like, it's the greatest feeling ever. Ugh. I am the champion. Yeah. Come take this belt from me. Mine. They, they could just sneeze on me. I would die. <laughs> But I can pretend, right? I can pretend. That is awesome. I have, I have not seen this one in person yet. I am super excited. Oh, so this is an exclusive. Look at that. But it is very, very heavy. So for the unveil. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. There you go. All right. Well, this is. Boom, bada, boom, bada, boom. The IWGP Championship. Oh, look at that! You gonna hold it up to that camera so everyone can see it? It is ridiculously heavy. So the cool thing about their belt is the little side plates that's there. They have who's the champion and the dates they were the champion. Oh, that's so, cool. So their name is always always on the belt. So but yeah, this is a. Uh, Feel the difference in weight of that one to this one. Oh wow, that is like mm, that yeah. would knock me over. Yeah, that is uh, that is what they call four stacked. So it's four millimeter plates, but it's also stacked like like four deep on 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 certain spots. Oh, that is it's fantastic. I yeah, could get the middle shot there. Yeah, isn't that awesome? That is. That's got to be what. Oh, yeah, probably 15, 20 pounds. 15, 20 pounds, yeah. Yeah. Ha has to be 20 pounds. The, the plate in the middle has got to be 15 pounds. Yeah. And you got the side plates, too. Woo. That is a I very, wasn't expecting very nice a workout plate. today. Yeah. That, I was really excited to see that one. So I think they're, they're freaking awesome, man. So, yeah, if, if, if you come to my house, so eventually we want to get our own location. Right. So, if you come to my house right now, it's just I have the stuff stored there. But when we get our own location, we'll hang these on the wall. Right. We'll be like, giveaways or whatnot for them but uh until then they're just all in my bedroom so how can people find you uh so right now our website's being redesigned so if you go to diamond championship wrestling.com in the future you can but right now uh it, it's under construction That's right uh but uh facebook uh type in diamond championship wrestling it's facebook.com forward slash dcw 2017 because that's whenever it started right, right right um so uh, you can go there, and that's how you found like all up to date. Like you know, there's videos, there's little vignettes, there's uh, promos, a little bit of everything on there. Uh, also, like our show info and stuff like that. We also have an Instagram, uh, and we're working on getting a Snapchat and TikTok. Cool. We're going to share all that in the show notes, and so you can be able to get that. And also for the other side of the business, though, you can also get Gamers and Geeks. So you can go. How can we find you at Gamers and Geeks? Gamers and Geeks dot com, uh, Facebook, the dot com forward slash uh gamers and geeks uh we have uh snapchat we have instagram Graham, we yeah have twitter uh we have all those things so, yep yeah and you then, gotta have it and, and then we also have g and g con dot com which is like the little uh conventions we run because as year. one of the things you wanted to do was run conventions that's right it? that's right so uh you can check that as well we're always bringing in all kinds of cool voice actors and artists and stuff so cool well tommy thank you for spending some time with me thank you in the ring, in the air, out of control. Oh, you know you're WrestleMania from NES. Eight Man Mayhem. Did you see that? Hulkamania, brother. Jews from Six Superstars. Unbelievable combat. No holds barred. Anything goes action. It's a slugfest. Two wrestlers in the ring, brother. Kick from anywhere. Total chaos. Punch in two directions. Complete mayhem. Run at your opponent. Amazing. Spin a robot. Double bubble. WWF WrestleMania for NES. I inject steroids into my balls, brother. And that was Tommy Wedgen. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That he gives a great interview. Oh yeah, he's a cool dude. Plus the belts are cool. Such, you know? such great stories. Something about wearing it. Like we we parade around the belts after the show, after the interview, out in the main um, gamers of geeks. And I had it on my shoulder, and I don't know, it gives you plus ten in confidence. I don't know. It's great. I just I had so much fun with it. <laughs> I kind of want a belt, so <laughs> we may have a mop cast belt. I don't know yet. <laughs> We'll we'll set it up for the next uh, for the next uh, game show. Oh, that that'd be cool. I thought about it. I thought about having a belt for the game show, just so people can take pictures with. Oh, we'll have to see. We will definitely have to see. Uh, well, uh, we'll be back next week with a new interview. Uh, I don't know who that is yet. Uh, we have to record <laughs> a bunch of them. 
uh like i said i've been busy with shows i've done yeah huntsville by the time this airs i'll be in vicksburg and nashville and hopefully next time I, i'm hoping to meet ashley x9 again uh, yeah so by the, it by is the next it is it is convention season so. it is convention season so um you can uh, again rate and subscribe to us on any podcast app. You can follow us on Facebook at uh, facebook.com dot com slash Tuesdays with Scotty, or you can uh, follow us on uh, subscribe to us on our YouTube page at youtube dot com slash Mopcast Network. Um, this is Scotty saying this is our contribution to the multiverse. Go out and make yours. <laughs>